be brief. Oh, happy Dagger. This is thy sheep. They'll rust and let me die. Oh. Oh. What does love feel like? Somewhere, at some point, in 2011, a 17-year-old Will Toledo set out to answer this question through music. Sat on the backseat of his car and howling out some of the angstiest lyrics you've ever heard into, by the sounds of it, the microphone of a 3DS. Then went back into his house, plugged his speaker into the wall, his guitar into the speaker, and again, by the sounds of it, then dropped his guitar into a bathtub full of water. He then proceeded to play this guitar. The result is the 2011 indie rock cult classic album, Twin Fantasy, Mirror to Mirror. Before we get into any specifics of the album, I want to discuss the portrayal of love in media and in pop culture, because this affects how we all view love and relationships, especially if we have more experience with media than we do with real people. Widely, love is regarded as this all-powerful feeling, and often in romance stories, one or both characters save, help, or as one somebody unhealthily put it, fix one another. Now, ask yourself, what do you get when you feed a lonely, depressed, artsy 17-year-old kid all of this, and then throw his first crush at him? This album is what you get. I'm here today to explore all the different ways that the idea of love in pop culture seems to manifest in the story of an actual teenage relationship, which Will so helpfully chronicled in Twin Fantasy. Now, on the surface, and certainly for the first two-thirds or so of this album, it seems like a pretty cut-and-dry story of young, queer love rife with the awkwardness of late-stage youth. And when trying to find a place to start with the analysis of this album, I think the second song, Beach Life and Death, is a great place to start, where Will croons about not knowing whether he and his partner are boyfriends yet, and where he at large explores the anxieties and mundanity of entering the real world post-high school, the disconnect from his friends and from humanity as a whole that he feels. Being a closeted gay man, even to his close friends, Will tries to bury the feelings he has for his lover, resulting in the album's first lyrical motif. Will himself, on a Tumblr post a while back, described this as a feeling of being unable to contain or move past your feelings for someone. Now, this song is 13 minutes long, so I'm not going to stay hung up on every single lyrics, but we see hints of this movie idea of love spring up in moments of this track, notably where Will fantasizes about being eaten by his lover, not in a vor way, at least I hope not, and being able to feel their smile from the inside, know them on an impossibly deeper level, even if it were to destroy him. You see, this album opens with a very grand and dramatic promise. Will sings to his boy, crying out that one day neither of them will have to be alone anymore. This romance is the through line of the album, and Will seems utterly obsessed with his partner. Just as an aside here, the track around this album is a short little sweet guitar ballad called Stop Smoking, wherein Will asks his partner to stop smoking because he loves them, basically to stop their self-destructive habits. This definitely will not come back later on the album and crush your heart. Anyways, it's revealed on the track Sober to Death that both Will and his lover seem to be plagued by depression and some fairly intense forms of mental illness, which he describes the metaphor of the final terror. But these two seem to find comfort in one another. The chorus of the song describing Will 
Will asks that they don't hurt themselves, that they rely on him for support, even if his own body is a ghost already. And he does his best to comfort them, and drops one of my favorite lines on the album with... <laughs> Two were spinning out into the empty void of the world, wrecks adrift until they collided. It's something of poetry, of a Shakespearean play, just recontextualized to be an indie rock song. As the song ends, we break them into soaring waves of crashing guitar riffs, like panic breathing finally coming to a halt, like holding onto your lover's hands as they shake and cry, sharing them. The album continues on and leads into Bodies, which is a song about finding solace in the ones you love and the joyful freedom of youth, even as you remain terrified that the world around you is falling apart. Now, with this song, I could probably talk about it forever, genuinely. I, 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 I could. <laughs> but let's start with verse 1 and 2, where Will explains... These lines highlight Will struggling with the ability to communicate with his partner, speaking in songs they can't understand, and correcting himself when he misspeaks. And the line about being sick of meaning displays Will's urge to just give up trying at all, to just hold on to the one he loves and surrender to the feeling. And as the song continues, Will fumbles over his words as he and his lover attempt to dance around at some party, blurting out to them... And as their awkward, stuttering jumble of limbs continues, anxiety creeps up on Will. The idea that they could die at any moment, that they could fall apart. Eventually, as Will rambles on and on about various romantic ideas in the background of the track, the double entendre of the song is revealed, as he extends an offer to get real horn- I, I, I just gonna play that, I don't have to say that out loud. <laughs> The meaning of this track is fully revealed as vocal lines begin to layer atop one another, Will choosing to try and use the freedom of his youth, sex, dancing, etc., and the love he feels for this person to try and overcome his anxiety, to just live in the moment. thing is where this joyful love story seems to start to stutter and become something darker. And you might be surprised hearing the roaring and pop-inspired melodies that make up the song, but any listen to the lyrics reveals something just beneath the surface. Will even opens the song with an apology for the previous track, saying, I don't know about you, but that doesn't really sound like the ideal dynamic for a relationship. Sure, lighting your partner's cigarette works as an aesthetically romantic gesture, the kind of thing you see in movies, but what does it really say? And what about stop smoking? Will begs to have a shot to help make his partner a man, seemingly and interchangeably referring to both God and his partner, promising to be their rock when they roll the dice. A consistency amongst the swirling madness that seemed like they were able to navigate their own bodies, but this track to me feels more like standing outside someone's window with a boombox, waiting to be let in. Forever disappointed, offering meaningless romantic gestures, and trying to affirm that you're loved. That the next track is High to Death, the first song on the album that takes an abrasively dark tone. It opens with a slow, almost robotic sound that circles around the listener. Will is laid down on the ground after a bad trip, watching the wallpaper swirl around him. It seems that he and his partner may have fallen out. 
but they rejected his advances from cute thing. I think it's at this point that we take a look back at the album and recontextualize it. Well, for the way I described it so far, it might sound like Twin Fantasy is exactly the quirky, surface-level gay teen romance I said that it masqueraded as at the start. Though, I purposely left a few pieces out. For dramatic effect, of course. If we take a look at the stray lyrics that pepper the first half of this album, things start to surface. Unhealthy levels of obsession. Lyrics from beach life and death like, Oh please let me join your cult. Let me paint my face in your colors. And the aforementioned lines about being eaten by your lover. Or the expressed inability to communicate with his partner that Will shows on bodies. And last but not least, the song I purposefully didn't talk about. Nervous Young and Humans. A song wherein Will admits during a long monologue and through an allusion to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein that he pretended that he knew a lot more about his partner than he really did. That he made a version of them in his head that didn't really exist. That's the person we've been hearing about all this time. And this is what happens when that all-powerful force of love you see in the movies goes too far. Will, all of this time, has believed that he and his partner will save one another. But as is very obvious to most people, those who are incapable of loving themselves and those who need help probably shouldn't enter relationships, or at the very least, can't be expected to uphold a stable relationship. Will is searching to become one with this person, to destroy himself in the process, just as the album cover showcases. Two people colliding, two wrecks crashing into one another, melding into one another. But now, Will has been hit with reality. His fantasy has been shattered. The other person pulled away from the embrace. By placing all of himself in that person, what is he left with? He's left with a great longing. Finally paying off the earlier, stop smoking with the heart crushing. would do anything to keep his lover around, even telling them to keep smoking, to not get better, to continue indulging in their self-destructive habits, begging them, terrified that he'll die if they leave him. Once he's able to get up off the ground and take him more to himself, he sits on the steps outside of his house and contemplates his own suicide. <laughs> When you're young, every emotion feels so much grander. These feelings are at the center of his universe. And he acknowledges this in the final section of the song, comparing the sun, the center of the universe, a ball on fire at the center of things, to his mind on fire at the center of things. This has left him destroyed, unable to rest his mind, unable to escape this pain. So what happens next? Apologies to future me's and you's But I can't help feeling like we're through The death of the relationship is completed. Will laments of what he feels like he went through for them. Dejected. Why would I write dejected disappointment permeating? What is wrong with me? Will laments what he feels like he went through for them, his dejected disappointment permeating in the lyrics. Those twin bruises on his shins have begun to fade. Time is passing. He's forced to move on. He has to face this feeling. He is stuck in one body, one mind, for the rest of his life. Stuck with this pain. But even then, Will still tries to bargain, crying out.
rest of the song attempts to cleanse the relationship of the transgressions he feels they both committed. To try and wash away the sins the ocean washes open their grave. Unearthing the feelings Will cannot let go of. In a heartbreaking moment of the album, Will cries out and asks. Wonders why his lover connected with him at all if they didn't want what he wanted. If they didn't feel the same way as him. It's selfish and it's immature, but it still stings every time I hear it. The anger and regret seeping in amongst the hopeless pleas to revive the relationship he built in his head. A relationship that never really existed. And the Bible verse at the end of the song just seems to show that this was all for now. All of his pleas didn't reach them. Once again, he compares his ex-lover to God. And just as the Lord was not present in any of the events of the passage, yet the area was affected, Will's lover is gone. But the damage the relationship inflicted on him is still there. I haven't looked at the sun for so long I've forgotten how much it hurts I haven't looked at the sun for so long I've forgotten how much it the final song, aptly titled Twin Fantasy, Those Boys, is the result of everything that Will went through. The idea of looking at the sun is the idea of facing reality and realizing how much it hurts to. And promptly after doing this, Will continues to dissociate from reality. He doesn't want to face it. He doesn't want to look at the sun. He knows how much it hurts now. He imagines the world where he and his lover can be one. Thankfully, the album doesn't end in this place of rose-tinted darkness, this disillusioned fantasy. This is something that takes place only in his mind, but he blinks now and shakes himself away. He has rejoined society. Come, dear children, call no more. He has only lyrics now. Will regains his sense of reality. As the song crashes out, acknowledges something. <laughs> As much as in reality before, as stated on Beach Life and Death, that Will can't be with his lover whenever he likes because of long distance, now he feels he can return to them whenever he likes. He can look back on the memories, the fantasy he created in his own mind, and they'll always be here. These lyrics, this album, this piece of art will always exist for Will to reflect on. And he does, actually, on the 2018 remake, which I might discuss in the future, but you might ask, what does all this have to do with anything? I see Twin Fantasy, as I said before, as a work about the idea of romanticization. Romanticizing a person so greatly that you feel unable to live without them, romanticization of one's mental anguish, even the romanticization in films of what can often be toxic relationship dynamics in real life, and the negative effects that come with it when you're faced with reality. That's why I started this video with Romeo and Juliet, in some ways a story that can be paralleled with the themes of this album, a story that for its entire existence in pop culture, is pretty well upheld as one of the greatest love stories of all time, and it ends in tragedy. Two star-crossed lovers who feel incapable of living without the other, taking their own lives as a result of grief. I think that the way pop culture and romantic media in general show obsessive romance in a certain light is exactly why a modern story like Twin Fantasy even happens. Will, at the time, wanted his Romeo and Juliet. He wanted someone who he thought would save him. That isn't healthy. Twin Fantasy doesn't end with Will taking his own life, of course, but the story also doesn't end in complete happiness. Will walks away shattered. 
feeling like less of himself. In fact, in a grand stroke of irony, his cries of not wanting to go insane on beach life and death don't save him. He isn't kept afloat by clinging on to someone. He's dragged down. He goes insane. Though it's not the schizophrenia he was worried about. It's more like monomania.